Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be trying out some Winsor Newton paints using this dot card chart that I bought on Amazon. It did come a little damaged, but hopefully that isn't too much of an issue while I go through them. There are 109 different colors on this chart and they give us um, they give us the opacity, they give us the light fastness, whether it's stains, whether it's granulating, and that's about it. They don't give us um, any of the pigment information, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes. When I first started this uh, dot card, I took it took me a little while to kind of get my footing and figure out which brush I wanted to use. Um, so the first row here on this first page is um, half of their yellows, the other half is on the other side. And a lot of them seem really similar to me, to be honest. Um, these first five here, the first one is considered opaque. The second one is semi-opaque, um, cadmium yellow is opaque, they have a cadmium free yellow, which is also opaque, and then their Windsor lemon, which is semi-transparent. Um, they all were pretty transparent in my testing, except for maybe the bismuth yellow, which is that second one. And they just look exactly the same to me, these first five. Um, the one thing I did notice was that the Windsor colors, the ones that are named Windsor, you know, Windsor Lemon or the Windsor Green, they're very pigmented, which is nice, actually. I, I've kind of been putting off trying the Windsor & Newton brand for a while because I've just heard a lot of comments about quality issues and consistency, but I'm actually pretty impressed with a lot of these. Now, yellows can be, you know, they're all pretty much the same. I, I, there's, there's not a lot of difference between the cooler and the warmer, uh, between the, the cooler yellows between them, and then the warmer yellows are all pretty similar as well. So I think if you have a warm yellow and a cool yellow, you're set. So this is actually um, <clears throat> about an hour and a half, hour 40 minutes of footage cut down. I tried to make this go as quickly as possible because I didn't want the video to be too long, but I still wanted to give you the information that you're looking for and, and allow you to see the different colors as they truly are. So my camera, for some reason, I could not get the settings to really pick up the color that I was seeing. So I scanned them in and um, what you see in the bottom there is as close as it's gonna get. They're pretty close. The, the scan is, is quite close to the true color on the card. So lately I've actually been looking for <clears throat> some secondary colors to add to my collection. Um, right now I'm using Daniel Smith and I had chosen uh, three cool primaries and three warm primaries as well as two utility colors which are Payne's Gray and red iron oxide um, and that has been working really well for me and especially when it comes to learning you know how to mix colors and you know how they go together having a limited palette like that is really helpful however it is nice to have some convenience colors that I don't have to mix all the time. So a nice orange or a gold color, a good violet purple color, and um, a nice green. Now green, green is one of the most difficult colors for me to find one that is one or two pigments, no more than that, and natural looking enough to be used. Um, now the reason that I'm looking for paints that have only one or two pigments is so that I can use them in mixes without getting mud. The more pigments that you add in a mix, the muddier it's going to look. So 
there you just saw me picking out cat hair that's gonna happen a lot during this video I have a cat he's got black fur and he sheds a ton everywhere on everything so never mind the cat hair something that I actually found really interesting about this dot chart is that they only list certain ones as granulating but you'll see later on I'll start showing you each um, each little box as I go through them a lot of them are quite obviously very granulating but they're not marked as granulating so getting a dot card like this is really helpful so you can test them out and see what you like when I first started learning watercolors I hated granulation I thought it looked sandy and weird and I just wanted you know pure smooth colors now I really appreciate it it has such a nice texture I it just looks so cool I really like it and it's funny because you know I would watch a lot of videos on YouTube and all the people would say the same thing Oh, granulation's so great and you know you may not like it right now but you'll come to appreciate it and I thought that's ridiculous honestly I don't like it I'm never gonna like it why would I ever like it I can't explain it it's just so beautiful the way the pigment separates and you get these really cool textures and I just really like it now and I I love actually a lot of these colors that are granulating are so beautiful I might have to get some of them so this first pink in this row is called Opera Rose and it's like hot pink I I have no idea what I would ever use it for personally now I I don't do a lot of like nature landscape stuff I do some I do like to paint a lot of animals um, but it, it just it's so unnatural I don't even I don't even know how I would ever use it so this isn't something that I would personally put into my own palette but that permanent magenta the third one in is gorgeous it's so pigmented and it's really beautiful I really like that now this cobalt violet was so light and it it seemed like it really I had a tough time getting um, a really deep color out of that and that from my experience is pretty typical of cobalt colors however later on you'll see um, Windsor Newton does have some other cobalt colors that are quite pigmented and they look really nice so that was impressive to me um, when I did Daniel Smith's dot chart they had quite a few cobalt colors that just did not work at all I couldn't get any color out of them these next five colors I would say are good examples of colors that Winsor Newton doesn't consider granulating um, they only mark two of them granulating but I would consider all five of them as granulating colors especially that first quinacridone violet it's super granulating you can really see it in the close-up now the quinacridone violet is one that I would consider putting into my palette I have looked at the carbazole violet from Daniel Smith very similar both beautiful rich colors look how pigmented this Windsor violet is it's so rich and vibrant I was actually very impressed with a lot of the Windsor labeled colors with how much color came out of just such a little drop um, and that means a lot to me because the more pigment is in the paint the less paint you have to use to get the effect that you're looking for a lot of the student grade watercolor paints that you find you know on Amazon or your local hobby store like Michaels um, they just don't have as much pigment and so you end up using a lot more paint and then the other thing is that you don't know what pigments are being used in each color so they might have three or four different pigments and so when you go to mix them you're getting results that are unexpected uh, most often you'll get mud and that's why um, I really wanted to upgrade my paints uh, a couple years ago and I went with um, 
something simple, I, I decided to go with Daniel Smith because they were so pigmented. I could take, you know, a very small amount of paint and go really far with that. I, I ended up getting the basic set of primaries and I added two colors and they're really small tubes, five milliliters, but I've only refilled my palette once in the last year and a half and I still have a ton of paint left and I, I paint all the time. I, you know, I do at least two or three a week. So that, that tells you how far you can go with a really well pigmented brand. The amount of pigment that's coming out of these cobalt colors here, the, um, the turquoise light and the cobalt turquoise is gorgeous. I'm really impressed with these. Um, even in the next set of five, the cobalt green deep and the cobalt green are both really pretty. And they actually have quite a bit of color to them. Again, the Windsor Green Blue Shade, the, the Windsor colors are super pigmented and this one is really beautiful. And it is granulating, I, I'm not sure why they didn't label it as such, but I feel that it is a bit granulating. And this is a color that I would possibly consider adding to my palette, but I feel like I could make this with a phthalo blue and a cool yellow like lemon yellow or Hansa yellow light, like something like that. The Viridian here was pretty difficult to get much color out of it, although I did um, experience the same thing with the Daniel Smith Viridian. And this is mostly due to the fact that it uses natural um, materials, I guess you could say, like stones to create the pigment. Um, you'll see that in the same with the cobalt colors, manganese blue. Um, there's one called Vert, Terra Vert. Um, that's the same. A lot of those rock based colors are going to be um, very light in pigment. And this is no different. So the next row of colors is um, a lot of the darker yellows, um, ochres, siennas, and natural browns. And I don't use a lot of natural browns in my paintings very much. Um, the only one in this row that I feel like I would really consider is the quinacridone gold. I would have to compare it. Um, with the other brands like Daniel Smith, um, M. Graham, and see as far as what pigments are being used, uh, which one I would go with. One of the reasons I love quinacridone gold so much, and in general all the quinacridone variants of colors, is the luminescence that it seems to have. Um, look at how it goes from that deep orangey brown red color to like this bright vibrant yellow and to me I feel like that has a lot of utility in my palette.
Here I'm just using a waterproof black ink a Pigma Micron pen to make lines across the bottom of those two whites, the Chinese white and the titanium white. More out of curiosity than anything else. I generally would never put um, a white watercolor in my palette. I, I wouldn't put a black either. Um, just because I tend to use white gouache if I need to use a white and ink if I need a really dark black. Otherwise, I generally tend to create my own black by mixing. The first two colors here in this row are actually really nice. I like them both. Um, Payne's Gray in particular has always been a favorite color of mine and the Winsor Newton Payne's Gray is really nicely toned. I like the blue, um, almost dark denim color, and the indigo is really deep and rich too. I, I can think of a few different projects I'd love to use that in. And this is their neutral tint. Um, a lot of people like to use the neutral tint just to either mute out colors without mixing other colors, um, or make it darker or more gray. To me, I don't quite understand the purpose because I find that using the complementary color, especially if it's something that you're already using in the piece, it pulls it all together really nicely. Um, that works really well to mute out colors in the same project. So here you can see just the opacity of those whites um, over that black line give you an idea of how opaque they can be. A lot of people like to use the white um, and gouache too, white gouache, to make their watercolors more opaque for different purposes. Um, a lot of times you can use it to make like a misty cloudy effect which comes out really nicely.
So just a little bit about dot cards if you're not familiar. Um, a lot of companies put out samples like this so that you can test out the colors on your own in, in real life rather than just looking on the internet because it's really hard um, to see what the color actually looks like on paper that you're going to use, um, how you're going to use it with your brushes and your techniques. So these are really handy um, to get an idea of the actual paint and what it will do for you. I've done a couple of these. Um, I, I started with Daniel Smith. This is uh, Winsor Newton. I also have a Schmincke uh, dot card that I'm looking forward to trying. Unfortunately, M. Graham doesn't make dot cards, and I think it's because their paints have honey in them to keep them moist, and I don't think <clears throat> that that would work very well to dry them on cards like this. Although, it would be really great if I could try M. Graham colors because I've been dying to try M. Graham for a while. I also got recently um, for my birthday this week, uh, my husband bought me the introductory set of Core Watercolors and I'm so excited to try that so watch out for that video coming soon too. I don't know what this color is, to be honest. It's a very strange kind of peachy, pinky red color, this rose door. I've never heard of it before. It, it does look like it has some granulation. I'm not sure where it comes from. I'll have to do some research on that. If you know, let me know in the comments. I thought I should mention this is not sponsored. None of the things that I show in my videos so far are sponsored. I'm too small of a YouTuber at the moment, um, but I don't really plan on doing any sponsored content. Um, I, I really just like to share what I know, what I like, what I find, and hope that you benefit from it and enjoy what I bring to you. This permanent rose color is a really nice cool red that you can use that'll make some really good mixes. I feel like um, the primary colors are not really red, blue, and yellow like you would assume. It's more of a magenta, a cyan, and a yellow. Um, so the thing is, right, here's an interesting fact, magenta is not a color that you can mix, right? So that's the definition of a primary color is a color that cannot be created by mixing. However, you can make red using magenta and a warm yellow. Isn't that interesting? I didn't know that when I first started using watercolors, which are so highly dependent on making clean mixes. And I was really frustrated because I didn't have a clean magenta and I couldn't find one in the materials that I had at the time. And so when I was creating my first professional palette, 
um, having a really nice clean cool red um, like permanent rose like quinacridone rose was really important and I think that every single artist should have a magenta in their palette no matter what. So as a bonus at the end of the video, I've created a basic palette from the colors on this dot chart that hopefully will help you come up with a palette of your own that you like and give you some direction. And if you'd like to see um, a video on color theory and a little bit of the color wheel and how I choose colors, why I choose certain ones, let me know in the comments and I can work on that. This is the Terra Verde color I mentioned earlier that is created from natural gemstones um, and so the pigment itself is not very strong and it takes quite a while to hydrate and um, get enough color to make it an impact. Um, it's very light, it is granulating. It's a pretty color, it's just not strong enough for me. Here is the other Terra Verde, uh, Terra Verde yellow shade. Like the other one, it's very light and very difficult to produce a lot of color.
This was another color that I found really strange. I've seen Naples yellow in other brands um, that's more yellowy and this is like a strange skin tone color. It's also quite opaque so it's not something that I would really use in my own palette. So this color is called Caput Mortem Violet, which <laughs> Caput Mortem literally means deadhead. And <clears throat> originally this pigment came from pulverized mummified bodies. So I am curious to know how they are sourcing this color, like what what is actually going into it because obviously they're not crushing up mummies <laughs> at the paint factory or whatever but if you know let me know in the comments I'd be interested to find out. As promised, I put together a palette for you from the colors on the dot chart. Um, this notebook is just a swatch book that I use um, for the different paints and stuff that I like to try. It is a Stillman and Burn sketchbook alpha series that I got on Amazon. It's not cotton, but it works just as well. So I have chosen um, three cool colors and three warm colors that I think will work really well in a palette for you if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of money to spend. Um, these will produce some really nice clean mixes. You can make virtually any color under the sun with these six colors. and. Um, I looked up the pigment information on the website, so I'm really happy that all of these are single pigment because I think the mixes will be really nice. So the colors I chose for the cool side are Windsor Lemon, PY175, Permanent Rose, PV19, which is also the same pigment used in Quinacridone Rose, which is a great magenta color. Windsor Blue Green Shade PB15. Um, that's um, almost like a phthalo blue and it'll make um, really vibrant greens and purples. Then on the warm side I went with Windsor Yellow Deep PY65, Windsor Red PR254, and 
French Ultramarine PB29. Now originally I had chosen Windsor Blue Red shade, but I thought that it was a bit too similar to the Windsor Blue Green shade. And the French Ultramarine is always going to be a really rich, warm blue that you can use in your palette. Now I've also chosen some secondaries if you really like to do natural landscapes that I think would work really well in your palette. Um, <clears throat> some greens and browns that would look really nice. Um, I chose two greens, Hooker's Green and Permanent Sap Green. Um, both are really beautiful greens and they're both two pigments. Interestingly enough, they're both using the same pigment but in different quantities. So on the website, they were listed um, in a different order. So that's really interesting. But I, I would probably go with the Permanent Sap Green over the Hooker's Green, although both are really pretty. I also went with quinacridone gold. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the Windsor Newton brand is three pigments, a red, a violet, and a yellow. However, it is a gorgeous golden orangey yellow color that would be great on its own. I'd have to test it out on my own and see how it would mix with the other colors I have, but by itself, it's a beautiful color that I think would work really well with you know, natural landscapes, sun sunsets, things like that. And then I also went with um, a, the Windsor Violet PV23. It's a beautiful purple, really rich in color, and it's a great convenience color that you can have that you don't have to mix um, on your own. Just to have it on your palette would be really useful. Then we have Paraline Green, which is actually made using a black pigment, PBK31, but it's a nice, deep, um, almost gray green that I think would look wonderful on like stones and cliff sides or trees so it's a great color to include and then finally burnt sienna which is created using a red pigment PR 101 but it's a beautiful brown that you can have you can mute it out with other colors um, so it would be really useful now the other one that I had considered including other than this burnt sienna was the Van Dyke Brown, which is such a rich, deep brown color. It would look great in natural settings. So I think you should definitely consider including the Van Dyke Brown um, as well. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, let me know. I definitely have other dot cards that I'm interested in getting into. Um, and if you'd like to see a video on how I put my own palette together, um, I'd love to do something like that. Let me know and make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks. Bye.